Hi, my name is Peter and I play guitar and sing in a band called Heart Tattoo. Today I'm going to be doing a pedal board and rig rundown. Alright, first things first, I'm going to show off the pedal board. Uh, it took me forever to build this and a lot of care. Now the story behind this is I went to build a punk board and I ended up building a worship board. So it took me quite a while and I have a case for it. So let's take a quick look at what's inside. All right, so this is the pedal board case. It's a hard case. I have a pedal train. Got just a couple of corny stickers on there. When we open her up, you'll be able to see exactly what we have inside. So of course, old cool case, hard case, lots of stuff. So like I said, it took me forever to build this and I'm gonna go in a little bit more detail coming right up. So as you could probably see, uh, I have my drives pretty much at the bottom. I have my delay and reverb at the top and then some modulation and some other effects up on top over here. So let's get into it. So here we are, this is the board. Uh, I bought a classic Pro pedal train a while ago. And I found myself trying to fill the space rather than to downsize. I was trying to build a punk board, and then realistically, it's literally impossible to build a punk board this big. You only need about two effects <laughs> for uh, to build a punk board. So I play in an indie band currently, and I actually do use pretty much every single pedal for that band, but when it comes to playing my music and hard tattoo, uh, I don't really use the whole thing. So I'm gonna go through each pedal and show you what they do and what I like to use it for and also what I don't like the pedals for. Um, so I'll get right into that. Uh, I'm not gonna play through them today. That might be another video if people like it. But um, I'm just gonna show you what they do, what I think and how even like a mix of pedals that I like to use and what I like to use them for. So uh, let's get to it. So I'm gonna move through the signal chain and uh, tell you each one what they do and what I like to use them for and uh, maybe even what songs to use them for. We'll take a look. So I will also show you the bottom of the board in a little bit to make sure that you see what the wi wiring is and the cables. So I use just EBS cables. Uh, you can kind of see them here. They're very small, they're flat. Uh, they're not expensive either. They're perfectly cheap and I love them to death. So that's what's wiring the whole board, and I will show you what my power supplies are in a second. So to start, we have the SP compressor. I didn't really need a crazy compressor. I was thinking about the Keeley, but I just needed a compressor basically to do its job during the cleans. I always pretty much keep it on maybe a little bit more compression and never really boost it too much more. Uh, I like the volume where it is because I just like to have it clean. So that's number one in the chain. Number two in the chain goes to my volume pedal. So I have a Dunlop DVP-3. I had the DVP-4, it was just way too big. I've also had the Ernie Ball, but I did, the string was breaking too often. So I really wanted a Phantom, and I also wanted a Phantom powered uh, volume pedal, and I've loved it ever since. Now from here, it's not in the chain, but I just have it on a separate tuner. It is just this you know, classic old Boss TU3 tuner, I do just use it on regular mode. I don't use it chromatically. And it's not in the chain, so I don't have a, that buffer to start. Now from the DVP3, I go to the POG2. So I try to keep all my like dry effects before my distortion. Uh, the POG2 is awesome. I actually did a mod on this myself. Or I actually had a buddy mod it for me. And so what I had him do, is I had to put them put a soft switch in the preset because if you're playing live and you're trying to click, I mean you can hear the difference. It's gonna sound pretty crazy going all the way through that. So I just you know soft switch in the preset and uh, I'm just had I went to go buy the parts and had a buddy put it in for me. From the Pog two, I go to an emissary boost by Walrus Audio. Uh, I love this for just a little bit of mid kick, so because in solos I just I think mids come through mix better, and I usually keep the clean boost up pretty much, uh, pretty high. And I it depends. I've been experimenting between 800 hertz or uh, you know a little bit more to get more kick out of the mids. It just depends on what you need it for. I pretty much only use this for solos, and I really like to use it with the fuzz pedal, which I'll get to in a second. 
So from the emissary, I go to the JHS Double Barrel V4. So this basically comes with the Morning Glory on this side and the Moonshine uh, Tube Screamer on this side. And I love that the Morning Glory is pretty much my always on pedal. I think it gives a perfect amount of transparent boost and drive. I enjoy it so much. I love that pedal. I Like I said, it's my always on. The Tube Screamer is when I want a little bit heavier, but I don't want like a full distortion yet. I love the, this is a great, I used to have a TS9, but I thought it kind of volume sucked. So this new, and you have the clean boost in it, which I think is pretty genius. I pretty much don't really use it too much clean. I use it for a gainier, usually solos. And I love this pedal. I, I use this pedal for every band, for everything. I think it's pretty much a must have. I, I love JHS's drives. So from there, we go to the OCD Full Tone. Everyone knows what this is. This is, I think, a VE 1.4. I mean, this is just like, you know, your classic Marshall in a box, and it absolutely rips. I use this for a lot of high gain uh, material. So for lead off hitter, I might use this in a full band setting. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I love the OCD. I've had it forever. It might, it's one of my first pedals. Um, love playing out of that. And from the OCD, I go to just more gain. So this is all stacked in its gain stage. I go straight up to the Hoof Reaper. So I always wanted a big muff, but they kind of cut your volume when you're playing live. Uh, and even just a little bit in general. So I wanted a little bit more control. So the Hoof is on this side and the Reaper is on this side. And the Reaper is, you know, your old school, like a uh, fuzz, like a 60s style fuzz. It's genius, brilliant. And then the hoof, I use. <laughs> I actually don't use this pedal as much as I thought I would, to be honest. And I, I use the emissary, the boost for it, uh, just to get it a little bit louder, too. And I love the tone, but if I'm being honest, I almost never really use it, and it's kind of just taking up space. But I do use it sometimes, especially for solos, and uh, during a couple covers, like we'll cover like a pup song or something, and then uh, use the hoof reaper. So at the end of my gain stage, the very last one, and this is all in front of the amplifier, I go to a freeze. Actually, no, I do have one more after this. Uh, a couple more after this. So the freeze, I also did a mod to. I put a soft switch in because the whole point of the pedal is to take a constant loop of what you're playing and keep it running. Uh, it's kind of like for droning or for, I like it for the latch mode. And the latch holds the sound basically forever. And then like this fast one, as soon as you let go of the pedal, it's gonna let go of those notes you're playing. So I use it for a droning sense. I might uh, drone, it, it captures all the sound in front of it, that's why I have it after the gain. So it might just uh, be cool, and then I'll let my modulation effects affect the tone that comes after that. But after that, after the freeze, I go to the Decimator 2. Now this one's like a mirror, you can see me in it. And it's a noise gate, and it's absolutely necessary for playing live. I don't know how people can play without a noise gate live. This is my last pedal I bought, and I wish I bought it way earlier. Uh, the G string is obviously much better because you can run it before and after your effects loop if you have one in your amplifier. But this one is just to cut out some sweet, sweet uh, humming, humming gain. And I keep it before my... Uh, preamp because I would just want my feedback to be cut and it's not my amp that's so noisy it's pro it's most my guitar my pickups which I'll get into in a little bit so after the decimator I go all the way down to the walrus audio Ju uh, Julia now this is a chorus pedal I don't really like a lot of chorus I don't like that Kirk being chorus you know where it's just drenched I like a real subtle uh, chorus or vibrato or not even vibrato, you know, like just almost dry chorus and then vibrato's all the way on this side. And I just like it to give a little bit of flavor. And that's literally it. I just keep it, I don't use it for any like major chorus. I replaced my flanger with the chorus because I thought the flanger was crazy. And the chorus is even, if it's all the way up, it's still a little bit too much. And then I go from there into the uh, monument. This is the Monument V2. It used to be a gigantic one. And then they just basically brought it into like this smaller box. And I love this pedal, like uh, it does so much. It can chop your sound, give your sound some movement. I like to use these pedal after the freeze, which I just showed, because with the freeze, since it takes your signal, you can edit your signal with the chorus and uh, tremolo. And I just absolutely love those. 
So from there, that goes into my preamp, and then so the, the next part of the board is going to be in the loop. So every, all this top section is in the loop, and what I keep first going, so I put the, it comes straight in, it goes to the JHS Mini Black Box, which is an attenuator. So since I, play, I live in an apartment right now, uh, this basically saves me from getting evicted from my apartment. So you can just, it's basically like a noise gate after your, all it is is a volume pot in a box basically. You could probably make one for cheaper, but I just bought one of these. And uh, I just make sure my tone doesn't suffer because the volume does. So after that, I go into my Empress Echo System. Now this is probably the coolest pedal I own. Uh, you can do so much with this. I mean, you could like look up any reviews on this, and I think it's the best delay pedal on the market, personally, um, because you can run it in parallel. This, so there's this these engines. It's a dual engine, so you can run a single delay, two delays that run separately from each other, serial, which means one delay affects the other one, or if you have a two amp system, you can set it to left right, so you can have one delay going to one amp and one delay going to the other, or just in any sort of steering you want. It's absolutely magical. You can save like 35 presets. And there's, I mean, you can tell there's every delay you'd ever want right there. Digital, tape, stutter's cool. Whiskey is wild. Uh, I, I love the ambient one if I'm ever writing a droning style song. And I think it's brilliant. And then one of my oldest pedals too, I got it for Christmas a while ago my, from my parents. So shout out to them. Um, an Avalanche Run V2 by Earthquaker Devices, and I love the reverse on delay on this. I think it, it, it's, I'm not a huge fan of the delay and reverb on either of these two pedals on the reverb or echo system. So I think this is like my magical, like one switch delay uh, with a little bit of reverb on it. And I use it for its reverse primarily, and then I have a uh, Dunlop DVP1. DVP, no, DVP Volume Mini, that's just, it's done even number it out. And DVP 4, that's what it is. And I just use it as an expression pedal. I originally bought it as a volume, but it was just too small of a footprint to like be accurate in swells. So I just have it running as my expression. And last but not least, we move up to the Empress Reverb. Now this pedal is also super magical. It's like, eh. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the best reverb pedal on the market, but it's one of my favorites. So, of course, the Strymon Big Sky is is luscious and beautiful, and this one is just as magical, though. I think it comes really close. I love its uh, ghost mode, It has a, and it's brilliant. Never really loved the sparkle that much, but all the other reverbs are absolutely brilliant. I think they're gorgeous. So now I'm gonna show you the bottom of the pedal board. So this is the bottom of my pedal board. I've tried to clean it up. It looks messy, but I swear to God, it's actually nice. So I'm just gonna go right to left, because uh, I think it's easiest to show you what I've done. So I have these Nutrig jacks, and what they do is, is since I play through a Vox AC30 amplifier, this jack goes into the preamp, and then these two are its effects loop, so ascend and return. Uh, I had to install that myself. So you can see like right there, it's a send return preamp in my super messy handwriting. It looks like a third grader, you know? But uh, I think it's brilliant because it just saves you a lot of cable work. It was uh, not even expensive. You could buy way more expensive ones online. But I just went new trick jacks and just did it myself and I haven't had an issue with them at all. Then I have two power supplies. I have the Strymon Zuma and the Strymon Ohi R30. I went the R30 because it has um, 12 and nine volt jacks you can't really see in there but i promise you they are there and they're also capped at 500 milliamps and my avalanche run i love it to death but i don't know what earthquaker was doing by making it run at a 425 milliamp clip and that was way too big for my other power supply which used to be a voodoo labs and i love that power supply but it just didn't have enough milliamp draw as need be so like like I said, I try to keep it as clean as possible. I have my cable runs going through. I never put my my um, patch cables in and strapped them down, only the power cables, because I always kind of edit uh, what I need with this. So it's just exactly kind of just what I need it for. And I always take pedals off my board, and I have a smaller board that I like to use as well for gigging, because I can't carry this everywhere. I probably I just take like around four or five with me. So that's the bottom. 
So to wrap up this video, I'm just going to talk about just some of my other gear uh, really quickly. So I run a Vox AC30 amp. I've had this amp for around three years now. Uh, I wanted an amp that could go clean or dirty, and so obviously Marshalls are way too heavy. And Fenders uh, are brilliant. That's really what the pedal board should be meant for. But uh, and AC30s are you know kind of spotty with pedals, but I still ha I haven't had an issue. And I thought it has a beautiful jangle to it, uh, which is you know, like the classic. I don't know if it's really jangly, that's what everyone calls it, but it has like this really brilliant high end to it. And I just like the way it's mixed. So you can't control the mids, it's only highs and lows, but the mids are like reversed in when you edit them. Uh, at least that I find. I find that you get like a mid push if you turn the treble down, like a higher mid push. And it does have a uh, effects loop on it. So I love this amplifier because I like to keep my modulation and t or excuse me my time delay and like reverb after and uh, I don't really love the onboard reverb tank but I do like pretty much everything about it it's it's huge it's heavy it's a little bit too big it's a uh, like 80 pounds it ba breaks your back but I do love it so my guitars I have two electric guitars and an acoustic my uh, newest one is a Fender Jazzmaster uh, I'm left-handed. I was born with this curse of being left-handed, and so I could only, at the time, get a Japanese model, MIJ, and it's a newer model. It's from Southpaw Guitars in Houston, and I did a ton of mods to it. I, I mean, I don't know what I haven't changed on this guitar. Everything that you've seen besides the wood is replaced. So the pickups, I replaced with no backs. I just, uh, with just JVMs, I think they're called, or JMVs. Yeah, uh, whatever. Either way. So I replaced the pickups with the because the old pickups are absolutely horrible. Well, they're not bad pickups, but they just sound like a strat basically, and I no one wants that in a jazzmaster. The bridge, everyone knows that it's been brutal if you're a jazzmaster owner. So I got a state trem bridge, and I lucked out because straight state trem doesn't even ship to the uh, United States anymore. So I ha I got a state trem bridge and a straight trem uh, tremolo. I don't have it in the guitar right now, but like another problem is like if you went like this your tremolo bar would just fall out of the guitar and that sucks so I got a stay trem All, everything under here is brand new basically underneath besides the wiring I kept the wires but the pots are different I went to 500k pots uh, to tame some of the highs the one uh, the one meg are awesome but I just thought it kind of, it, they sounded kind of cheap I didn't think that they were that great parts in there um, the other mod I did was up here in the phase switch so I never really liked the phase switch that much either on any Jazzmaster, not for what I use a guitar for. So instead, it's the par pickups are running parallel, and I switched up to like this now. I had a guy do a mod uh, that puts it in series, the pickups in series, which gives it a little bit of a humbucker. So basically that's what a humbucker is, it is by putting two parallel uh, single coils together and wire them. And so since these are in series, they have a little bit, they take out a lot of the hum and give it a lot more bite, so I could use distortion a little bit easier. It sounds kind of wild, because, you know, it kind of, it almost like combines these two into one, and it's pretty strange. It bypasses the pickup switch, so it's, it basically uses both of them at all times, uh, no matter, I mean, it totally bypasses it. So, and I also put a new jack in. Uh, what is the name? It's a crazy jack, though. It has like four prongs, and not just one. So it's, it's never, the, you can't even like pull it out of the guitar unless you really wanted to, which isn't a problem stepping on it anyways, but like I said, I pretty much replaced everything on this guitar, and now it's uh, my own little Frankenstein, so love it to death. Another guitar is my oldest guitar, uh, no, not even close, uh, Gibson Les Paul Studio. And this guitar I got for my 16th birthday, again from my parents, I really lucked out. My parents are music. My dad especially is a musician, and so he's kind of relaying a tradition where his parents got him an accord a concertina when he was 16, so I got this guitar. I haven't changed anything on it because I don't think there's anything really to change. Maybe one day I'll do the pickups because I personally, out of the Gibson line, they're like my least favorite. I think it's the 490 and 498 uh, that are in here. And it's a, everyone gives Gibson a lot of flack now. But to be honest, I've never had a single problem with this guitar. I've had more issues with the Jazzmaster than the Gibson. Like, it's just a quality build. I mean, nothing can go wrong. I 
love this guitar to death. Like I'm, I'm never gonna get rid of it. It's probably gonna be touring with me. I use it for anything, really. You know, it's a humbucker Les Paul. There's nothing really more to more to add. I think it goes nice with the Vox. Like it looks good. So can't really complain there. It's a gorgeous guitar. And then last but not least is my acoustic. Uh, this one is a little bit a little bit older. It's an older model too. For it's an Ibanez. And you know, it's an Ibanez doesn't always name everything. It's an A E L ten L E black, <laughs> which is like left handed and then B K is black, you know. And it just does exactly what I need it to. I mean it's an acoustic guitar, electric, has a tuner built in. I like that, especially for acoustic, so that's uh you know, pretty much sums up my my rig. I use uh, not pictured here that, but I also love are couch guitar straps. They're vegan guitar straps from California. Absolutely genius. Uh, I would definitely go check them out as soon as you possibly can because I think they make great products. Um, uh, all my cables are different. I use a local New York one. I can't remember the name, and then also Runway Audio. I use a Runway Audio cable. Love them. Uh, not a single issue. I thought there was one, and then I called them. They said uh, it's not the cable, and they were 100% right. <laughs> so they're even, they're smart guys over there. And my strings, I go between String Joy. I think they're from Nashville, Tennessee. I'd have to double check, but I could be wrong. And of course, Ernie Ball, the classic. So uh, that's pretty much it. That wraps up. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was pretty long, a lot of gear to get through. I could have split it up, but hope you enjoyed it.